So let's talk about the thing that really uh, did push things forward. And I think maybe, maybe you'll disagree, but flywheel blasters are really what push things into, well, that and one other thing that came a little bit later, but I think flywheel blasters were the first Did it come thing. later or was it first? I actually can't remember. I think it came when. Later. When did the uh, the open flywheel project start? I'm I'm like, man, I'm gonna get crucified if I'm wrong on this. But I'm yeah. like 99 sure that the flywheel blaster upgrades, the the flywheel cages and stuff, started before the Caliburn. Well, yeah. Let, let me I, let me clarify. See, I already knew where yeah. you were going. With of that course, one. you knew. Yeah, but let me clarify on this: the machined Caliburn existed during this period, but the 3d printed caliburn was not there we had already seen i think one or two generations of flywheel cages before the caliburn became a 3d printed phenomenon and i have to remember that the flywheel cages weren't all open flywheel project because before open flywheel Mm -hmm. project there were just etsy stores selling flywheel cages that was a thing for a while so and yeah they're the three 3d printed flywheel cages literally brought flywheels into the forefront. There is no debating that. Before, like getting, a, you'd buy like the artifact red cage. I, I remember this video exclusively. Getting 120 FPS out of it, and you're like, ha, ah, that's awesome. Except for like, you can get a long shot rather easily with some brass and make it hit 200 FPS without even really trying. Yeah. So. Yeah, the first aftermarket metal cages were not high FPS cages. I mean, even the, you know, what was regarded as the pinnacle of, of quality and still the early generations are very nicely made pieces. The, the Snickers cages, they were not high velocity cages. So nope. it came down to uh, modders designing 3D printed flywheel cages with a higher crush rating to push markets or, or designers from, you know, worker and other places to make metal higher quality cages that were higher crush. So without that's that, actually a recent thing too. Yeah. I don't think the forty two point fives, and I don't think they go tighter than that. I don't think those cages came out until like last year, mm, two years ago. Two years ago, yeah. you think? Yeah, it's been late, a while. I want to say late twenty eighteen was when I got my Dominator kit in, and that's they right. just had all of the forty two point fives. We didn't have three D printing we would probably still be able to get those kinds of cages, but they are kind of monstrously expensive and they're very, very well done. But like that would slow down development time on every single flywheel iteration way, way back. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I don't see uh, the tsunami cage being a thing yet if that was the case like i'm trying to think how long it's been since containment crew released their cage which uh is still is just a beautiful cage from their from their 3d printed designs where they they then had the machined in a a really nice look uh i will gush about these as long as i have them because i I have one that i need to put in a blaster (laughs) they're just they're just gorgeous uh but they wouldn't have done that if they hadn't seen that their 3D printed designs performed well and they could go from there. We should probably check on the fact that the original FDL was also a very, very early project. I want to say that was a 2015 project. 2015, the original 16, somewhere Mega. in that time realm. Yeah, it was yeah. it was uh first nation versus zombies, I think. Uh they had it at. Why? Well, I, I mean, it was it existed before yeah, that though. Yeah. It, but it was like you're talking about. It's a big turret mega dart blaster, and then like that that was a big deal because I think that was like one of the first fully 3D printed blasters like that. I believe you're correct. It was definitely one of the first, um, and yeah, leading the way towards the FDL two, which definitely had a massive impact as well being just a a much more i don't want to say usable but game friendly blaster because i don't think you could buy an fdl like an original i don't even think that was an option was it i think that was just something he made i think the files were available Hmm. i think it was possible i think the files still are available i could be wrong 
I'll have to look into that. But yeah, the FDL2, just because it used elite sized darts, made it a much more welcoming platform in terms of regular game use. Because even when Mega was fresh or had been around for a while and uh, aftermarket darts had been made, people weren't using it widely. So it wasn't as like friendly to use at games because you have to provide all your own ammo. It's less likely to scavenge stuff during games. So having access to something that was, you know, elite size dart usable was a huge step. And that, you know, as we all know, Project FDL created a, a kind of monster of a blaster that just people have loved and they have stuck with and continue to use. I mean, it's currently my my FDL three is my go to competitive blaster. Um, so they have definitely had a distinct impact on the 3D printing side of things. But uh, I I think that I would say Slug, mm-hmm. Captain Slug with the Caliburn had more of an impact initially because he made everything open source, um, meaning anybody could download the files and print their own blaster, which for the price that it was, was 60 very, bucks for hardware. Kit. Yeah, yeah. Very compelling. And it got people into it. And then they felt they could customize things themselves and tweak and, and all of that. Yes. There was a lot of breakage of parts and reprinting and stuff like that, but it was an interesting thing that really got people involved in a different way. Uh, Had it not been for that, there wouldn't, I, first of all, you, you can't understate the fact that slugs caliber made our NIC level combat or ultra stock, whatever you want to put it. It made it way more accessible for people because before really you had air blasters and then you had a couple of people who could really get a long shot working. And that was pretty much it. And when the Caliburn hit the scene, that was like, cause they, of course you could machine one yourself, right? I mean, you have a drill press, you have drills, you have all the files like to hand cut everything. No, it, like I wanted to for a long time. And I think the one part I needed the entire time was a drill press, but I just never had one. So it was never a thing. And I just never made a homemade, even like a rainbow pistol. But Having just, oh, I just print out all the files and fit them all together, and boom, I have this rifle that hits 200 FPS. It was magic. Yeah. 